Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty One, whose power does not reside in humankind and whose word is enmoomed at the heart of creation, we pray you for Mary, whose yes made a place for love, whose song of transformation makes thrones and rulers tremble, whose prayer is heard because she is one of us, through Jesus Christ, Mary's child. Amen. Amen. The first lesson, a reading from the book of Susanna, part of the apocryphal book of Daniel. Now, Susanna was exquisite, very much so, beautiful and shapely. Scoundrels commanded that she be uncovered, for she was covered, so that they might sate their lust on her beauty. But those who were with her, her parents, her children, and all of her relatives, and all who saw her began weeping. Then the two elders stood up in the midst of the people. They put their hands on her head, now she wept, looking up to heaven because her heart trusted in the Holy One. Then the elders said, We were walking in the garden alone. This woman came in with two enslaved girls and shut the garden gate and dismissed the enslaved girls. And a young man who was hiding came to her and reclined with her. We were in the corner of the garden. We saw the lawlessness. We ran to them. And although we saw them having intercourse, we were not able to overpower him because he was stronger than we. And when he had opened the gates, he ran away. We seized this woman. We asked who the young man was, and she was not willing to tell us. These things we testify. They were elders of the people and judges. The assembly believed them, and they condemned her to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, Oh, everlasting God, you are the one who knows hidden things, who knows all things before their genesis. You know that they have testified lies against me. See here, I will die, though nothing they have wickedly said against me have I done. And the Holy One heeded her voice. Here ends the reading.
A reading from the first letter of John. See what kind of love has our maker given to us, that we should be called children of God, and that we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know God. Beloved, now are we God's children, and it has not yet been revealed what we will be. We do know that when God is revealed, we shall be like God, for we shall see God just as God is. And everyone who has this hope in God purifies themselves, just as God is pure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. A genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of Miriam, the daughter of Anna. Sarah was the mother of Isaac, and Rebekah was the mother of Jacob. Leah was the mother of Judah. Tamar was the mother of Perez. The names of the mothers of Phiston, Ram, Aminadab, Nashun, and Salmon have been lost. Rahab was the mother of Boaz. Ruth was the mother of Obed. Obed's wife, whose no name is unknown, bore Jesse. The wife of Jesse was the mother of David. Bakshibam was the mother of Solomon. Nama the Ammonite, was the mother of Reboabam. Machma was the mother of Abijam, and the grandmother of Asa. Azuba was the mother of Jehoshaphat. The name of Jehoram's mother is unknown. Achalilah was the mother of Ahaziah, Zebaah of Beersheba was the mother of Joash. Jecholeah was of Jerusalem, bore Uzziah. Jerusha was Jotham, Ayah's mother is unknown. Abai was the mother of Hezekiah, Hephzibah was the mother of Manasseh, Meshulabeth was the mother of Ema, Jediada was the mother of Josiah, Zebedah was the mother of Jehoiakim, 
Nehashata was the mother of Jehoiakim. Hamudal was the mother of Zedekiah. Then the deportation of Babylon took place. After the deportation to Babylon, the names of the mothers go unrecorded. These are their sons. Jeconiah, Shealatala, Zerubbalah, Abiadam, Eliakim, Azor, Zidok, Ikim, Eliud, Eyasar, Mashum, Jacob, and Joseph, the husband of Miriam. Of her was born Jesus, who is called Christ. The sum of the generations is there, 14 from Sarah to David's mother, 14 from Bathsheba to the Babylonian deportation, and 14 from the Babylonian deportation to Miriam, the mother of Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one who is to come, amen. Well, a little liturgical housekeeping first, or as we call it, Episcopal 101. Uh, today is the third Sunday in Advent, and typically we use blue as our color, uh, which kind of manifested itself in France in a monastic community and kind of went all over the world, instead of purple, which is a penitential, penitential color, uh, blue kind of went through the Church of England, was adopted, and so in the United States, we're kind of slow, but uh, of course St. James is an early adopter. Blue is the Miriam color throughout the ages, in art, in all sorts of, you know, uh, venerations of Mary. So blue is the color of Advent. However, Historically, it was purple, and there were five Sundays in Advent, purple being a penitential color. Everyone thought it was a good idea halfway through to have a break in the penitential, self-flagellating mode and go with rose to honor Miriam, Mary. So this is Rose Sunday, so you see a rose candle being lit. And I think our gracious choir has even rose-colored. Oh, look at you. On the spot. So this is Miriam Sunday, where we honor the birth, I mean, Jesus' mother. And so that goes back to about the 5th century, where there was a transition uh, from blue or purple to the pink Sunday. Um, a lot of churches wear rose-colored vestments. I absolutely refuse to wear rose because I only get to wear this vestment four times a year, and I'm going for it. So, Okay, so we have this scandalous story in the book of Susanna. How many knew there was a, even a book of Susanna in our Bible? Yep, nope, okay, so I'm going to show you something. Another Episcopal 101. In the Episcopal Lutheran Catholic Bible, there, I'm not going to get into the Septuagint and the Vulgate Bible, blah, 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 because you won't, you won't remember it. But in our Bible, right in the middle, it's called the Apocrypha. Right there, see? These are non-canonical books that are useful for instruction. So they're stories, and so they've inserted in our Bible, the Apocrypha, there's Bell and the Dragon, there's the Maccabees, there's all kinds of cool books. So go home, see if you have an Episcopal Bible, because that's where it is. I thought I would show you that today. Susanna is very scandalous. It's a scandal story, it's a Ancient hashtag me too story, to be honest with you. Nothing's changed in our world. Susanna is a beautiful wife of this man who apparently has lots of money, and so they have a private garden 
She is going out to the garden with her maidens every day, and she takes a bath. And for some reason, she dismisses these two maidens one afternoon. Now, in the meantime, the judges, these two judges, come to the, this husband's house, and they do their judging. Now, I can't put two and two together why that happens. Maybe like a little paint and play. She kind of forget the details, but let's go with it. So um, they lust after Susanna. And they can't help themselves. They just, but they don't know that each other are lusting after her. So they kind of leave late to see if they can peek in the garden. And they bump into each other in this garden. And they have to confess to each other why they're there. And they're like, well, we have a great idea. Let's go catch her when she comes out of the garden and, you know, try to accost her. And she yells and screams, and the maidens come, and the two guys accuse her of sleeping with another young man. And they said, we couldn't, we, we tried to stop it, but this young man was too strong for us. You know, like, it can unraveling, right? Too strong for us, but we saw her. And so, in this culture, women are considered property, there's purity laws, you better not do anything. In fact, men have to speak for you, your brother, your father, your husband. So she's helpless. And these guys are judges, which are supposed to be of, you know, like the highest ranking people that you would expect to be pure and tell the truth. So maybe I'm taking too long here, but I want you to get the gist of it, is that Daniel, this book is inserted as the 13th chapter of Daniel, and it's not proven that it really belongs there. Daniel races to the, uh, this trial because they're going to put her on trial. They basically say she's guilty without even looking into it. And Daniel's listening to this story and going, wait a minute, you know, she's been virtuous. What's with these guys? I don't trust these guys. So he says, let's question them separately. You know, like kind of NCIS. Let's separate rooms. So what happens is that the first guy um, is asked, well, what, what tree did this happen under? So Kent's going to show us the mastic tree. The first guy says, oh, it happened under a mastic tree. Well, that's a mastic tree. So Daniel goes into the other room you know, and gives him a glass of water, like you see on TV. <clears throat> the second guy goes, oh, it was under an evergreen oak. Let's show an evergreen oak. <clears throat> Immediately, right, they're lying. So they put those two to death. And the end of our chapter here is Susanna is vindicated. But what did Susanna do the whole time? She kept her eyes above on God for vindication. Now, that is a sweet story that she kept her eyes on God and above because a lot of us face a lot of tragedy. A lot of us have various things going on in our life that are unbearable many times. Uh, we have things that, you know, in our family, in our work, look at our world right now. So all well and good. But you just saw me struggling through the genealogy of Jesus from the feminine perspective this morning. And I get maybe a B plus on the pronunciations. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to lie. There were 40 names, people. So <clears throat> what does this all mean? Jesus comes into this situation where another woman is accused of being, you know, impure. Mary is found pregnant. A husband has to decide, or her fiancé has to decide if he's going to marry her. It's a scandalous situation. But that's where God comes in. God comes in to our scandal, into the messiness of our lives, to the loss, to the grief, to everything we could imagine. God comes in at that moment. If we look at the genealogy, you say from the house of David, David, Jesus is born from the house of David, right? David committed adultery with Bathsheba, and to make his reputation go well, he has his, her husband killed on the front line in the war. This institution is 2,000 years old. 
And the Old Testament even goes to like 4,000. Dr. Yark can, can tell us exactly. But there's something in our DNA that keeps rolling along with this immortal peace that we all have in the messiness, in the scandal, in the hurt, in the lust. There's something in our genealogy. You have 2,000 years. Why does the church still exist? Yes, it's had its ebbs and flows. Yes, the scandal. Yes, we get frustrated. But there's something that keeps drawing us here. It's that promise of reconciliation, of salvation, of eternal life, of a better world, that things will get better, that somehow existentially this world makes sense. This morning we just have to feel this kind of this presence coming to us in a couple of weeks. The Jesus the Christ we want born because otherwise what do we have? We have a chaotic world. Things are going crazy, we think. Perhaps we've lost a loved one. Or we have something going on in our life that is unbearable. Enter the women who have carried the Messiah all along. Enter the women who have gone through all this pain that have carried the DNA for the Messiah, and we carry it too. Simply by the fact of sitting here, we are the good news. Now, Gaudet Sunday, Rose Sunday, Gaudet means rejoice in Latin. It is a Sunday to rejoice at the anticipation in a few weeks of the child who came in the dirty, messy scandal of all the generations, of our generations to save the world, to save you, to save me. I think that's rather profound if we can think in terms, when we look out into a hurting world, that we can rejoice that there's a promise and there's a hope of a better world because God is still creating, God is still moving us toward this world where there will be no more tears and no more crying. I think it's an amazing Sunday that we have this kind of break in the action to celebrate the women who carried forth the Messiah and who we continue to carry forth into the world. This week, rejoice, the Messiah is coming. Now, would you please stand so we can affirm our face using the words on page eight. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the world made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate Christ's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. I have tasted the fruit of the earth, O oh God. I have seen autumn trees hang heavily with heaven's gifts. I have known people pregnant with your spirit of generosity. Let these be guides to me this day. And may Mary, who knew her womb filled with your goodness, Teach me the wisdom that is born amidst pain. May I know that deeper than any fallowness in me 
is the seed planted in the womb of my soul. May I know that greater than any barrenness in the world is the harvest to be justly shared. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that until Christ comes again, we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome to St. James and welcome to our virtual congregation on this rainy Sunday morning. Thank you for being with us. Um, we have a gift for those people who are new to St. James. So if you're brave, raise your hand and our acolytes have a gift for you. Uh, back here, anyone over here? James, you're not new. Little baby James is like... Back here, anyone else? Everyone's been here before, okay. Okay. I thought I saw some new faces. Um, if you are new, you can fill out an information card and stick that in the um, offering plate as it goes by, and we can be in touch with you. Um, hospitality, after the church service, we have some really warm, wonderful goodies for you, so please join us in the Great Hall um, straight ahead after you exit the doors here. Announcements start on page 18. There's a lot there. 
a lot of our Christmas schedule, so we want to make sure that um, you know when the services are. Tonight, the long-awaited Messiah concert. We can't wait to hear a wonderful um, Christmas carols, Messiah, Christmas um, Handel's Messiah. Uh, Mark and his conductor have been... Look at this festival choir. we got part of you here. It's fabulous. You're going to get a little preview, right? A preview today? Yeah. Okay. So we're excited about that. Uh, tickets are still on sale on the website, or you'll see an Eventbrite link or a QR code in your bulletin. I suggest you get them early so you don't get bogged down at the door. Um, we also are selling tickets after the service in the Great Hall, so that would be a great time to get them. Uh, blue Christmas, uh, for those of you who are blue or have lost someone who's not joyful at the holidays, uh, this service is for you. It's a time of meditation healing, prayer. It's uh, the shortest day of the year, December 21st at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Christmas Eve, of course, we have at 5 p.m. and the Christmas morning is 10 a.m. Now on Christmas Eve, we're recruiting kids for our, our no uh, line pageant. So hopefully you'll be here at, um, have the kids here at 4.30. We can suit them up in their cute little outfits. So hopefully, uh, see Tamara, I thought I saw her come in. Tamara's right here. See, Tamara, after service, if you have kids, grandkids, niece, nephew, uh, we'll suit them up in a fun outfit. Uh, page 23, we are collecting Ukrainian um, uh, goods for the Ukrainian winter. You'll see on page, uh, like I said, 20, oh, sorry, 23. Uh, we really will probably be collecting these through Epiphany, if not longer, uh, but you'll see in your bulletin some pictures of our goods actually making it to the ground with the military that we collected in the summer. So if you can look there, you'll see. They're, they're making funny costumes because they don't want to be <laughs> identified, but you'll see that our goods made it to the ground through the gracious endeavors of Lydia, um, who is in the back. Can you wave, Lydia? There she is. Okay. Um, so if you uh, have a little extra at Christmas time, it'd be great to... It's going to be a long winter, uh, so we want to collect... Uh, goods for them. Okay, our budget. Uh, okay, people, we have a graphic for you. Uh, here we are. Uh, we're trying to do nine, 907,000. We're at 793. Uh, so that means right now you get everything but your priest. <laughs> and it has been suggested I go to halftime. You know, so uh, if you have not turned in your pledge card, I think we have 80 out of 100 uh, pledge cards. I think we could make it, but we really need your help and pledge system in the church is basically saying, here's what you think you're going to be giving. It really helps us budget uh, for the coming weeks. I will say that um, we seriously do need your help this year because of our prices have gone up as well. So if you want to reconsider your pledge or if any way you can help, extra would be helpful. Um, after the service, we need to move the altar. So if you've got some brawn, and are willing to help this wonderful festival choir set up for tonight, right after the service. See Mark? Mark, wave your hand. There you go. And he'll tell you where to move everything. So, um, the impact you're still making is that I was asked to do the invocation tonight before the Messiah concert at Diane Dixon's installation as our new assembly person for the state of California. So, you see how... I mean, it wasn't anyone else was asked. St. James, we are considered the church of Newport. They wanted St. James to do the invocation. So we have representation at the state level also now. Isn't that cool? Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. God bless you as you give to this amazing ministry. Thank mm -hmm. you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you have sent your beloved Son to redeem us from the sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. to you, holy and living God. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And through your holy prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Finally, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace, you looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaim good news to the poor. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour 
out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the banquet of the Lamb. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You have been here often and you have not been here long. You have tried to follow and you have failed. Come, because the Lord invites you, the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Creator God, you have fed us with the bread of eternal life given to us by your Son. In time or out of time, you will be revealed and we shall see you face to face. Give us grace to accept the Christ who comes in your name and the courage to be Christ for others. In your most holy name we pray, amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, especially in all the messiness and the scandal, to love and serve the Lord.